Hi everyone, my name is Amy Woods from Oklahoma Able Tech. I'm Able Tech's occupational therapy assistant. I oversee um, a multitude of AT categories and also in the liaison between Sooner Start and Able Tech. Today we're going to do an overview of the assistive technology kits. First, I'm going to do a small presentation on the partnership and overview of Able Tech and Sooner Start. And then I'm going to present demonstrations of each piece of AT included in the kit. So let's get started. An overview of assistive technology AT kits. The Assistive Technology AT Device Demonstration Program is located at the various Sooner Start sites in Oklahoma. 28 kits are dispersed throughout Oklahoma counties. The purpose of the AT Demonstration Program is to offer individual or group exploration of one or more AT devices to assist in decision making about device purchase or utilization. In addition, the demonstration program can offer guided experiences for individuals and small groups with a particular device to support effective usage. The AT device demonstration program policy. The AT device demonstration program is available to all children receiving Sooner Start services. Requests for devices may be initiated by family members, advocates, or service providers. Demonstrations may be offered in person or virtually. All devices available for demonstration are for short-term loan through the Able Tech Device Loan Program. Requests for device short-term loans through Able Tech may be initiated by family members, advocates, and service providers. The AT Demonstration Program Procedure. Service providers with the input of families will first think about the needs and abilities of the child and determine what AT might help the child do something they might not otherwise be able to do. Service providers then choose one or more AT devices to show the child and family, allowing them to interact with the device and or try out its features. Parents and caregivers will have enough information to decide if they would like to try the device for longer, through the short-term loan program, of course, or if they would like to demonstrate any other type of AT. Following demonstrations, service providers will complete and submit demonstration reports to AbleTech. AbleTech maintains data on Sooner Start demonstrations and determines quarterly and annual recognition awards based on the following. More than one discipline reporting, so it could be speech and OT reporting, PTOT reporting, an increase in demonstrations from the previous quarter, so you need to have more demonstrations than you did in the previous quarter. So if you have 150 demonstrations, you need to have 151 or more. High decision making. So we want to know, is it going to be effective? Is AT going to be effective for this child? Not specifically the piece of AT that you have demonstrated, but is assistive technology needed? And then the satisfaction outcome. We would like to see 85% higher of satisfaction, whether they're satisfied or they're not satisfied. Submission of a success story with a photo release. Able Tech will provide $500 in new AT to all quarterly recognition award winners and $800 to all annual recognition award winners. Sooner Start AT Contacts will complete inventory checks on all Sooner Start team kits once per year and report results of working, missing, lost, and stolen items to Able Tech. We will replace the base kit items that you have reported 
this does not include your bonus items of your recognition awards. Sooner Start AT Contacts will ensure all AT is sanitized after each use and a sanitization checklist is complete once per year to submit to AbleTech. There are 10 AT device categories. Devices may fit into more than one category. This will be determined on the functional needs of the user. One of the categories are daily living. These are aids for daily living in order to help with self-help aids and equipment. In our kits, we have the Easy Hold, the First Essentials by Nook Trisuction Plates, and the Arc Z Vibe. Environmental Adaptation Device Category. Environmental adaptations are environmental and structural adaptations to the built environment that remove or reduce barriers and promote access to fabrications in the home, work site, or other areas that remove or reduce physical barriers. We have quite a few items in this category. The sound pillow, the weighted vest, the power link, the mini fan, the battery adapter, the big red switch, jelly bean switch, pal pad, wobble switch on base, spec switch, dual switch, latch and timer, movement sensor switch, sound activated switch, and the cushion grip switch. Hearing device category. Hearing equipments are aids or devices designed to assist with hearing. We have the boom whackers, bright starts, light and learn drum, Disney Baby Winnie the Pooh Head to Toe, Ear Suspender Headband, Hearing Aid Clip, Melissa and Doug Pet Sound Puzzle, the Music Egg Maracas, the Pediatric Hearing Aid Kits, Phonak Leo and Books, Rattle Rainmaker, Learning Cognition and Development Device Category, also now known as LCD. Devices or aids that provide access to educational materials and instructions. Products that assist with learning and cognition. Now, we might not be accessing educational materials from birth to three, but we are needing to access the learning and cognition and body development. Um, so this category looks a little different for birth to three. And included in these are an iPad, a cuddle for little duck book, colored overlays, noisy farm, muffin pan with pom poms, story box, slant board. Mobility seating device category. Seating, positioning, and mobility are aids or devices whose Focus is on augmenting or replacing the functional limitations of an individual's mobility. We only have two things in this category and several in our short-term loan for um, ability to borrow. We have the Fisher-Price Sit Me Up floor seat and the Versaform positioning pillow. Recreation device category. Recreation sports and leisure equipment equipment for leisure, recreation, and exercise. In this category, these are often just play toys, anything that we can get the kiddo to engage in for fun. So we have the bubble mania, we have the fiber optic switch adapted light, and the spinning light show. Speech communication device category. Speech communication devices or aids designed to assist with speaking and face-to-face -face communications for individuals with speech difficulties. We have the communication board, a seven level communication builder, the Big Mac, and symbol stick squares. Vision equipment. 
aids or devices to facilitate access and participation for people who are blind or visually impaired. These include the Lamaze Rainbow Glow Rattle, the light box with colored overlays, plexiglass spinner and patterns, touch and match, and the Uncle Goose Nemeth Braille Blocks. We have a few miscellaneous tools in our assistive technology kits. The first one being a notching file. It's a tool used to puncture a hole in the device's battery compartment door to allow a battery adapter to enter the compartment. The tool is used to adapt toys for switch compatibility. We also have the multi-purpose 25 piece mini toolkit. It's used to change batteries, adapt toys, and tighten loose parts of AT equipment. The analog battery tester. It tests all common batteries to determine if they are charged or need replaced. This device includes test leads for easy testing. For now, I'm gonna get set up and ready for our show and tell. These are the easy holds. This is our first item in our daily living category. The easy hold comes in various sizes and helps to grip a variety of utensils, toys, tools, cups, etc. It can be used to hold any object for better control during play and meal time. The Easy Hold is 100% food grade silicone, non toxic, latex free. Um, it's dishwasher safe and it's medical grade disinfectant wipe safe. These are really neat. They come in various sizes. Here's two more. Here's another one. You can just see how different and various that you can get different sizes of objects in them. Um, this one, for instance, has a little um, textured fork on it that you could um, do for a kiddo. This one has a tiger on it. So if they can't grasp the little action figures or whatever you're wanting to play, zoo or whatnot, they can go ahead and have this new universal cuff to be able to hold and grasp objects. Here I have a marker. Um, the best way to do this, these don't fit my hand because I'm an adult. These, of course, are kids, but um, I'm going to hold this backwards. But as you can see, I put it on here and then over my fingers. But typically, you know, you could do it back here on the wrist. It just won't fit over mine. Um, and then it's attached and they can grasp with help and then not drop it, which is really nice. Next, we have the First Essentials by Nook Trisuction Plate. The First Essentials by Nook Trisuction Plate helps make meal times less messy and easier for the child to self feed has three sections with deep cutouts and texture, which makes it nice. And then um, you have the three suction cups um, to stay on the table so it does not get moved. Um, they kind of are easy to knock off, but if you make sure that they're, you know, slick down there pretty well, they'll stay um, unless you have just a really forceful kiddo. Um, I like these because they're deep, like I said, and you can scoop really easily into them. And then it has these little grooves to make the spoon to where you can kind of get in a little niche and scoop it out, which is really cool. You can also do sorting. You can work on three color sorting here um, or three different object sorting, whatever you need to do. Um, kind of a multi-tool. I also sometimes like to stick these on the wall and put something down here um, or in these so they have to reach and grasp. I'm working on some range of motion. That works very well. Then we have the ARCS Z-Vibe. It is a travel kit. So it's the ultimate vibrating oral motor tool for speech therapy and feeding therapy. Also for sensory stimulation, which people don't think about. 
Um, the Arc Z Vibe is compact, slim, and easy to use. This device provides tactile um, feedback, so it wakes you up. It um, just gives some good increased sensation um, for oral awareness and tone and decreases uh, mouth stuffing and drooling so you can get some proprioceptive input and things like that um, to be able to stop overstuffing the mouth or stop being so oral. It really helps quite a bit. So it comes with the, um, of course, vibrating tool, the bar, the batteries in the bottom. You turn the bottom for it to come on, of course, and then it comes with five pieces, five, we can get them all held up here. Yeah, it comes with five different pieces. So you have a probe tip, you have a prefer tip, a mini tip, and then a hard spoon and a soft spoon, which is really nice. So one of your spoons. This one's textured differently. One side is dots, the other side is lines. This one's the round texture. And this one, this one's the soft spoon, the blue one. And then same as the other one. I think one's just softer than the other. Very excellent tool to have. I used it a lot even for kids that were um, sensory sensitive worked very well. Now we're gonna go to environmental adaptations. And the first thing I'm gonna show is the sound pillow. This is a portable soft corduroy uh, wedge pillow. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Um, it's used for soothing and calming and the pillow has several sound choices. If you open up the back by zipper, the sound mechanism is inside and it has several different sounds in it such as water, white noise, and a heartbeat. It can be turned on and off and has two vibration speeds which is really nice. Um, you can simply remove the sound machine like I just said from the interior um, and you can choose a preferred sound and attach a switch for easier access. So you can attach the switch and you can do this on and off. Um, the kiddos can turn it on and off. It's really great for some tummy time and some extra sensory stimulation while they're on, your, on their bellies and maybe a bit more soothing and calming because you know a lot of kids don't like to be on their bellies. Um, so this is a good motivator and you can use a switch to turn it on and off as well or you can be in control of that either way, whatever your goal is. Um, a very nice piece. Always weight bearing kiddos. So this really comes in, ha in handy with the littler ones because it's not very high of an angle. Um, and then of course your on and off switches right here. Then we have a weighted vest. This is an old school weighted vest, but it's the one I have in my kit because everybody else has the new ones and they're loaned out so much that I just keep the older ones. Um, so this is a little weighted vest. The weights are in the pockets and they're Velcroed. You can put multiple weights in here. These are quarter bag weights. Um, everybody has a different one in their kit, so it depends on what your sizes are, but generally they're quarter size weights. This is really good for calming, proprioceptive input. Um, you need to use this in the um, you need to use this equipment with a provider's um, guidance. It's not something that you should use without. Um, there's guidelines and criteria for it, such as um, the weighted equipment should not exceed 10% of the body weight. Um, you don't want any more and um, it might not be effective at any less. So you definitely wanna do your calculations, 10% of the body weight. Then we have the battery adapter. It's always my tricky friend. 
So the battery adapters, you should have two. You should have an A and a CD. The battery adapters are a simple way to convert a toy into a switch toy quickly. So you should have two different size discs, one being A and one being CD. Um, you have to use these on appliances or toys with one um, switch function so on and off only you cannot use a toy that has multiple switch functions or it won't work so you just take out the bottom battery compartment cover you take the circle disc i need the small one and you put it inside on the flat, on the positive end, and then put it back inside. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but when I get done, I'll turn it over. So just like that. See how I put it in there, that little slot? That was too easy this time, so. Grab a switch really quick. Turn it on. I thought that was too easy. Drop the battery now. Get it. I need to make sure that all the batteries are in. They are. If it works now. There we go. So there you go, an easy on and off switch um, adapted with a battery adapter to convert the simple toy into a switch toy. Very easy to do, but remember, it has to only be the one function on and off switch. I got this little train, I think, on Amazon for less than $10. That's really nice to have on hand. And I don't think these are used very often, which is kind of sad. But also we don't have a lot of one function switch toys or one function toys anymore that you can convert. Um, so if you're wanting to just look around the family's home and try to find, you know, those one switch easy toys and adapt them, that would be great. All right. Let's see what else we have. We have the Big Red Switch. The Big Red Switch, also known as Big Red, features a large five inch activation surface and is perfect for children who require a surface, a large surface due to visual um, and mobility motor impairments. Um, the switch top can easily be removed and uh, replaced with a different color which allows the child to access toys, appliances, electronic devices with the slightest touch. It also has some good mounting points on it. It's a one switch press and release.
Then we have the one you just saw, which is the cushion grip switch. It's also super sensitive. I really like the touch activation in it. You just slip it over your hand with the elastic band. And then you can probably kind of hear it. It's like a bubble. Um, I kind of explain it like the packing bubbles that you get. That's what it feels like and sounds like. Um, very simple to activate. I mean, it takes barely any touch at all. Um, you can put it on the foot. You can even shimmy it up to the elbow. Um, you can put it anywhere you want, really. Super versatile. And what I like is the simplistic touch pressure control that it has. Excuse me. I'm going to get out the spinning light show and kind of give you a, an idea. So, it's very easily, I mean, you don't even have to really press too much. It's really light touch. And then, of course, the big red, normal, easy target switch. It's kind of loud, I'm sorry. And then we have the dual switch and latch timer. This one was always kind of intimidating to me until I figured it out. So the dual switch latch and timer can be used with any pre-adapted device. So the spinning light show or your bubble machine. Um, you can also use it with a battery adapter. The switch allows a child to access toys and appliances um, with the slightest touch of a button and it has controls of three modes. Um, so you have the latch, timed minutes, timed seconds, and this knob right here is your seconds and your minutes. There. And what I like about this one is that, can't really tell here, but you can do two devices and two switches, which is really cool. Um, so then they can have a choice of access. Do they want to access the bubble machine or do they want to see the spinning light show? Um, it really just depends and it gives them a choice and a voice, which I absolutely love. So let me get the, I should have left those two out. Well, again, you just add in kind of gets tricky. So I'm going to put it down. Where's my cushion grip switch? Here it is. Okay, so you have your cushion grip switch the bubble machine. <laughs> I must have it on latch. It's funny. Now I'll shut off. There it goes. And then you have And then you have the, so then I can run them both if I wanted. A little chaotic, but. So pretty fun. Um, again, it gets a little crazy with all the cords. I have my cords tied up, that way I'm not all confused when I'm giving this demonstration, but you can let them loose and, and put them in a safe manner um, for your kiddo. But don't be intimidated by this one. It looks intimidating, but it's not. It's very simple to use. Once you try it, get the hang of it, um, it's fairly simple.
sometimes you have to remember what mode you put it on, but that's about it. And we have the jelly bean switch. It's a button touch switch, just the same as the big red switch, only a smaller target. It's a sensitive pressure switch as well. Um, it requires less than two ounces of pressure, which is really cool. Um, and it has a two and a half inch um, press surface on it um, for those children who can access a smaller area. I've seen these used as head switches a lot, hand switches, elbow switches, which is great. Pretty much anywhere that you can mount something, these work really well. So if I wanted to mount it on a wheelchair, or I wanted to use my elbow, I could do that. Just a very universal, fair sized switch to use. This is the pal pad switch. This is also another really universal one. You guys have the mini. I do not have a mini, so I'm just showing you the one that I have available. I'm getting a bad glare from the computer screen. So it is super thin. It's about one tenth of an inch thick, which is minimal. It's very durable. It's really hard. You cannot flex it. Um, it's very sturdy, um, which makes it kind of nice. You can use it for foot activation. Again, elbow, knee, you could mount it upside down um, on a table or whatever it might be, and they can lift their knee to activate a device. Here, I'm moving my knees around like you guys know what I'm doing. Um, so it's another really simple switch device to use. Like I said, foot tap, knee tap, elbows, head, hands, thumb, whatever you want to do. Um, fairly easy, easy switch. You can see down here in the corner where my spinning light show is. I tilt it a little bit. I feel like my head gets cut off. There you go. Really great piece. And we have the move uh, the movement sensor switch. It's a unique switch, adjustable switch that's activated activated by the tiniest movement. And when I mean the tiniest, I mean the slightest. Like this fan can trigger it. Um, sometimes it is unpredictable for me, and I think it's because I'm always something always uh, around me is moving, like the fan or whatnot. So you have to make sure that there's minimal sensory input in the environment in order for it to work consistently. Um, so right here is the sensor for the movement. It's on modular hose, so you can move it in any manner that you want, which is really neat. Forward, back, it's on a swivel. It also has the three modes, which is the latch, um, timed, timed, and then um, the momentary. And then on the sides, there's the on off, the time adjust, and the sensitivity. I'm about to set those backwards. So on the side, your device goes in. You turn it on. See the green light will come on. I'm telling you, I'm not even hardly moving. And it just keeps going. But you can adjust the sensitivity. You can see that I'm interrupting it. And we have the power link. It enables a child to be able to control things in their environment, such as the mini fan that's included. 
in your kits. Um, you can use lamps, anything that's uh, plugged in. You can add your choice of switches. So here I've hooked up a light. And And then you can see the blue side is the one that I have turned on, have selected. Um, you can do both statuses. You can do time up and down. You can change the modes, which is count, to switch, timed minute. Um, and then you can do direct latch and time second. Um, so then you have all your settings. You have an on off switch in the back so you can turn it on and off. And then your switches go on either side. Let's see. There it goes. So then I can access the if I wanted to and you can also like I said you can put this on timed minutes so then you can turn it on for five minutes or you can um, have it turn off in two minutes or whatever you may need so they have to reactivate it Then we have, let me get back out an easier switch. I think it's tricky sometimes. Big space. So then I hooked on the other side to the fan, the jelly bean switch, so I can access the fan. And then I can do the lamp. And I can do them at the same time. Which really can be fun for a kiddo who <laughs> doesn't like to torture their parents with the lights and turning things on and off. No, my six year old does. So that's the power link. Um, it's something that's also really underutilized and it's really um, useful actually because you can again have those two choices. It's kind of like the dual switch and latch timer, only a bigger mechanism. Um, and it's for plug-in items. We have the sound activated switch. This is also similar to the other ones, the dual switch and latch timer. So the sensitivity is here on the back, along with the microphone. Um, and then your time adjust, your mode, your three different modes, as we've been talking about, your momentary, your latch, and your time, and then your on and off. It works just like the other ones. Stay organized. I have so much AT around me, guys. Turn it on. Uh. Hello. Hmm. Uh. If you're working on utterances or just any kind of. Uh. Uh. Hmm. I mean, anything. And like I said, the sensitivity, you can go more. Uh. Uh, or less. Pretty reliable switch, especially those that um, have minimal um, body movement. So 
really nice option. The spec switch. Super tiny switch. It's very compact. It's also wired. Super small activation surface. Um, also, same thing, allows kiddos to access toys, electronics, devices um, with a small touch of a button. Uh, you can do finger isolation with this one, two fingers. Um, you can mount it flush on a base so that way they can access it any way they need to. Um, it's super space saving, which is nice. These act just like the Big Mac and the jelly bean. I find that this one needs a little more pressure activation than the other two, um, but very similar. We have the wobble switch on base. This is another favorite of mine. So here's the base. It does have suction cups on the bottom. It has this little swipe action piece on it um, that you just have to hit in any direction, forward, backwards, diagonal, sideways, um, anything like that to be able to activate the device that you're needing. It's a very simple um, switch that you can use and you can use it, like I said, in any direction. You can mount it, you know, on the side of the wall or whatever with the suction cups on, you know, the high chair, on a wheelchair tray, anything like that for a kiddo to have access to a device. Super, super simple. Um, and the, let me turn this off. The activation point is kind of like a latex, I don't know if it's latex per se, but it feels very rubbery. Um, and so you get that pretty smooth swiping action and it kind of sticks to your skin. Um, so it's not super slick to where they miss or they don't activate it. As you can hear it clicking, I'm activating it as we speak. Um, so it's a really, a really universal piece for the little kids, especially. You can use, even use that for kicking if they're on their belly, you know, and on their, they're kicking with their feet back and forth or on their back. You can have them kick it as well to activate something really good. We're on to the hearing category. I'm excited about this category. We have added a plethora of different items in this category, whereas we had one thing before, now we have several. So the first thing I'm gonna introduce are boom whackers. So you make music with these constructive play things. It's a boom whacker tube set. So you guys have, I think, eight of them, eight to ten. Um, they're percussion tuned tubes. And if you whack them against any hard surface, they produce a sound and different sounds, which I think is cool. So great for grasping, great for um, just attending to what side you're hearing on, which is great. Um, just those different sounds and tunes. Um, are really neat. Plus, who doesn't like to hit something? Little kids drumming on things. These are really fun. I'm excited to hear about the uses of these. Um, I think they're a great addition to your kits. So they improve listening development, of course. Then we have the Bright Starts Light and Learn Draw Toy. For this puzzle. So this is the drum toy. One, two, three, drum with me. I love it because it has a mirror and then the lights are on the inside um, for a musical display. And um, when you yeah. tap it, it gives you a display and then you can. Two, three, four, five. Do some rhythm and rhyme. You can do number mode. 
You can do music. You can do color. Another new item is the Disney Baby Head to Toe. This is a fun new book that we have. It has multiple sound buttons um, that name parts of the body, um, such as the head, the eyes, you know, it goes to head, shoulders, knees, and toes, um, which is super fun. It tells you things to do like shake your shoulders, wiggle your nose, um, just a multi-sensory book. So this is pretty fun. Head. And so each character, it tells you which one to push. Head. So you have some good directional goals in here. Also some finger isolation, early literacy, read along, just a great fun tool to use, especially on these um, virtual therapy sessions, because you can say, which one do I need to push? And you can push it, you know, push as they say, just a good interactive toy. Then we have the ear suspender headbands. They're designed to offer uh, functionality and peace of mind for hearing aid uh, wearers of all types. Um, this allows for the adjustability to the silicone hearing aid and the headband to align the hearing aids perfectly to the ear. So here's the silicone band where your hearing aids go. Here's the other one, so you can adjust it along the band as you need. And then, um, of course, you fit it to the head as needed, make it smaller or larger. It's just like a headband, it goes over your head. I got green for everyone because it's a pretty universal color. Um, this is a great piece to have, especially with those infants um, that need hearing aids, so they're not pulling them out or losing them every time you turn around. Good piece. And we have the hearing aid clips. I'm so excited about these. So the hearing aid clip prevents the loss. Look how cute that customized Able Tech clip is. So cute. Um, they prevent the loss of behind the ear hearing aids. So you put these on the hearing aids on both sides um, and then you clip it on the back of your shirt. We've also covered the clip in felt that the maker did so that way it doesn't itch or bother the kiddo with multiple sensory needs or um, deficits or overstimulation. Um, so that's just softer and better for them. So it goes on the back, of course, the back of the shirt. So you clip it here. Oh, I could use the little, I could use our little Phonak guy. So you clip it to the back of the shirt. And then you put the hearing aids, put them on the hearing aids. Of course, it looks a little different on this little guy, but you get the picture. And then they have a safety net for their hearing aids. So if they come off or they pull them off, they're still hanging behind them. Um, and it's really kind of hard to reach around. So um, it's a great safety net for the hearing aids. And just look how adorable that is. So cute. Next we have the Melissa and Doug sound puzzle. I absolutely love puzzles. I love them for hand-eye coordination. I love them for visual tracking, fine motor skills. This one we put in the hearing because it, you know, it's identification of animals, sounds. Um, it's just a really good learning cognition piece and listening skills. I mean, like I said, fine motor all those kind of things. It's the small peg, peg pieces. Just your standard pegboard. It does have the little bitty knobs on it. Great for pincer grasp. And of course, match the animal. Um, I would suggest taking the batteries out. 
you're traveling with it because motion sets it off um, and it's always going off in my bag so you don't want to run down the batteries um, but just a classic piece that we all use i think as providers to help kiddos with their fine motor listening um, and learning and cognition And we have the musical egg maracas, another really simple percussion toy. I like these because they're Palmer grasp. So they're fairly big. I mean, they're, they fit my hands really well. So I know a kiddo they're going to be quite big for, which would, would help with grasping. Um, so with every shake, there's a rattle. They also have paint, you know, they're painted really fun. They're wooden, so they're very durable. They're not going to break open easily if they're thrown. But you introduce your little ones to rhythm and rhyme, which is great for hearing development. So hearing and grasping development. The next one we have is the pediatric hearing aid kit this is really exciting phonak has provided these for us for our kits it is a hearing um, instrument with safety features to protect small children while ensuring optimal performance and uh, putting parents and caregivers at ease the kit includes a pediatric um, clip high holder a drying capsule, battery testers, stickers, phonak, air puffer, um, what else? A drying beaker, a listening tube, um, and four keychain hangers, which is pretty neat. It's a great kit for those kiddos and parents that are new. I'm just teaching them all the safety and cleaning precautions. Um, for their hearing aids, it comes with a really cool guide that teaches you about the kit. It teaches you how to use the listening checker. I got it backwards. It teaches you how to, um, or the battery check. It teaches you to listen check how to clean, just some step-by-step -step guidelines. Um, you know, so if the parent's overwhelmed and the audiologist has told them all this and they forget, they've got a great reference guide. Here's the drying beaker. It's kind of hard to see. Another little um, hearing aid clip. It's kind of heavy, that's cute. Got Leo, Leo the lion. Um, and then it has the dry caps that go in your drying capsule. And then you've got a few of your other things your puffer, your listening tube, and then the keychain hangers. Multitude of items to help you take care of the hearing aids. Really neat kit. Or I will use it. Next, we have the Leo Phonak Leo and books. This is really kind of a cute idea that Phonak came out with. So they have their mascot Leo the lion, and he has hearing aids, as you can see. And then it comes with two books. You have Leo gets a Roger system, and then you have Leo gets hearing aids. So this is just a really fun um, piece of equipment to have when your kiddos have hearing aids and they're new um, and they're just uneasy about them. It makes them feel a little more comfort. You know, they get to hold Leo while you're reading the book. They get to kind of explore and discover um, his hearing aids. And then it just gives really good social stories for hearing aids for Leo just school settings and situations, just relatable social stories, which is awesome. You can also, if you lose these books, you can download it for free on um, Apple. I'm not sure about any other 
device, but I know Apple carries the app and it's free to download. So those are included in your kits. Now we have the Rattle Rainmaker. Simple fun, stimulates the senses, easy to grip. So they can do either way. You can work on supination, pronation. Um, it's just developed rhythmic and rhyme. Um, it's a good discovery mechanism. Soothing also, grasping, hearing, visual, kind of goes into a multitude of categories, which is great. Hopefully you could hear me over that Ronald Rainmaker. <laughs> Now we're going to be doing learning cognition and development. The first thing we have is your iPad. Super great for um, early literacy activities. I'm going to do some screen sharing if it'll let me. I have a few really good early literacy apps. I really enjoy one of those are Peekaboo Barn. Here it goes. So I have these kind of um, performed and categorized in categories. So daily living, switch adapted. Here's our learning cognition and development. So Peekaboo Barn is one of my favorites. Super easy. Peekaboo barn. You can learn any, you know, any animal sounds. You can do um, touch activation. Super simple. The barn door shakes. You open it. Gives you the sound. Rooster. Tells you what animal it is. Simplistic. Just an easy cause and effect activation. It's very easy. Some other of my favorites are the Duck Duck Moose apps. I think these are phenomenal apps. Duck Duck Moose. Very interactive, hands on, rhythm and rhyme. So it tells you, it shows you what you need to do. So it gives you some direction. And I have to keep, you can't see me, but I'm sliding my finger to keep the bus moving. I still have to keep going. And then you can change the page. The doors of the bus go open and shut. And it shows me that I need to slide that way. The doors of the bus go open and shut. And then I can activate the bird. I can shut the doors. The doors of the bus go open and shut. Very easy to use. They also have an itsy bitsy spider one that I like. Move on back, move on back. The driver of the bus says move on back. So all throughout here, I'm activating these things. So I activated the airplane. Activated the teddy bear. So it's kind of like an exploring app as well, which is fantastic. One of my new ones that I've um, discovered is this light box. So you can create your own light box with the iPad. If you don't have a light box with you, it's great for sensory stimulation. It's great for regulation, um, especially those kiddos that um, just love light and flashing and those kind of things. So blank screen and I touch it. Just a really good cause and effect. I'm just moving my fingers all around the screen. Tapping. 
anything like that. And you can do, um, you can change the color palette. You can take a, I think you can, I thought you could take a picture. I think you can take a picture. You can see it up here in the top where my mouse is. I don't think I can do it right now because I'm screen sharing. Um, you can turn on and off music here or the sounds actually. And it's got two different pages of cause and effect sensory light box, which I think is really neat. But I do guys, sorry, you weren't supposed to see that. I hopped out of it. Just a little different. There's all kinds. Very neat. I also like to use musical hands as an infant one, but it's also a simple cause and effect, really easy. Um, just making music, doing rhythm and rhyme. It's really fun and interactive. So that's a few that you can see right here of my learning and cognition development apps and you can find this resource on our website under the Sooner Start Collaboration page. I'm going to stop sharing that and go back in. Here, get my screen adjusted back so I can stay on track. So then we have, you can also use this, of course, for speech communication. We have Snap Scene, Snap Core First, Prolo Quota Go, Lamp, um, a, a multitude of those as well. I'm going to screen share one more time, I think. I'd like to show really like to show snap scene because I think it is an incredible early intervention app. So this speech communication app is um, a very quick at hand app that takes a picture of your environment and then you get to circle whatever you're working on. So if you're working on ball, you just circle let me see if I can. Yeah, here's the quick tutorial. So you tap up here to start and draw a hotspot where it says hotspot. And then you just circle whatever you're wanting to work on and then you label it, which is so cool. And then it's called the hotspot. So then you tap it and it says what you're working on. I want that ball. Catch it. Your turn. So you definitely have to touch within the hot spot, not around it. You've got to touch inside the hot spot circle. Push it. My turn. Catch it. It's just really, really neat. Like I said, you can draw the hot spots. I'll draw one, draw one right here. And then you can record the sound. Rug. rug. So then in any, any object in your environment, you can identify, which is really neat. They also have like basic concepts. So they just have your colors. Red, blue. Pink. So if you're working on color identification, they also have positions, which is a little hard for this age, but I mean, you get the point of the different varieties that they have in basic concepts, shapes, you have as well. Triangle. Numbers. And animals. And then again, you can add your own um, files, your own concepts. So you just have to snap a picture of whatever you're trying to do um, and then hot spot it and you're ready to go. So on the fly, it's just amazing. It's one of my new favorite apps for birth to three. And again, like I said, these are available to loan 
with our short-term loan department. So just contact us and we'd be happy to help you um, get any of those speech communication apps to trial. Then we have Huddle for a Duck. This book is also an early literacy book and it is um, fully brailled, which is kind of hard to see, but you see right here underneath the title is braille. It's brailled throughout the whole book. So then um, you can support the early development for infants and toddlers um, who have various dis uh, disabling conditions. Um, so low vision, blind, they can start feeling and discovering um, braille and tactile differences, which is really nice. You know, it's super hard to see um, when you're trying to record this, but you can see a little here, the strips of where it's brailled. It's also nice, you know, if you have a parent that has low vision and reads braille or is blind and reads braille, um, they can read this to their child and their child can follow along, which is excellent. Uh, just a couple of different purposes for this book. Then we have the noise, noisy farm book. This one's great to adapt. We adapted this one. This one actually is not adapted, but it's really nice for auditory feedback, um, tactile stimulation, learning and cognition and development for young readers and explorers. Um, you know, a lot of the times, if it doesn't have, like this one has the blatant, um, fur for the cow, which you can feel the button. So it's easier to access. But like this rooster, he doesn't really have a place where you know it is activated. Um, so we like to put um, Velcro dots or a post-it note um, or something like that to adapt the book in order for the kiddos to find where it's activated out because it's so difficult and they get so frustrated because they know it makes sound, but they don't know where. Um, so it's right in the middle of the rooster's breast. And so um, sometimes that you just can't find it. And sometimes it's really hard to fill. So it's nice to have a tactile or visual cue to be able to activate it. And it's like that throughout. I like the ones that are already pre-textured. Um, so they can find it themselves. Fun book. The kids always love these books. Then we have the muffin pan. Seems really silly. Why do we have a muffin pan in our AT kit? Well, the muffin pan is super versatile. You can do sorting in it. You can do counting, feeding. You can do food separation. You can also do like top to bottom, left to right. You can do a lots of things with a muffin pan. That's why it's included. The story box. So if you give a mouse a cookie story box or you have supper time for Frida Fuzzy Paws. So this one is supper time for Frida Fuzzy Paws. It's on a box, we put it in a bag. And we've gone through the book and we have collected the necessary tools to, to make it an interactive book. So here are the family, they're cooking dinner, they're prepping. They're at the table eating. Doesn't look too happy. Now she's eating, she's drawn a cookie, she wants a cookie, she can't have it till after supper. And so we've provided things in the book for ob object identification. So plate, should have a couple of cookies. We have crowns, we did provide a piece of paper but that's for one time use so you'll have to replenish that. But um, your crayons so you can draw the cookie on the sheet of paper. Then you have the pasta that you can put on the plate. You can make believe with it, interact. 
It's a really fun activity. It's something that you can just do quickly at someone's home, you know, withdraw a book from their bookshelf and just grab a couple of items or have the mom or dad grab a couple of items so you can do an interactive story, story box. Um, again, these are super simple to use in the home. Then we have the slant board. It's a 22 degree angle has collapsible legs that make it portable and discreet. Put my wiki sticks in here so I wouldn't lose them. They have plastic clips to hold paper or whatever you're using securely in place. So it's on some Velcro, so I'm gonna make a loud noise. But it's foldable. So you just Wrap them in here. This one's not been used very much, so it's kind of hard. There you go. There's your slant board. This is great for contrast. It's black. Some of yours are blue. Everybody's kind of got a different color, but I have black. I love to use wiki sticks on this um, to make, you know, a storyboard or shapes, um, anything crafty, fine motor with the wiki sticks. I also used to use this while the kids were prone weight bearing on their elbows and put, you know, a puzzle or an activity on it. Um, so it was at an angle so they could see easier, but we're also working on weight bearing and shoulder strengthening. Really good activity, multi-purpose unit. Compact, you can lay it flat. Wiki sticks are really fun to use. They stick to the board super simply. You can work on shape making or shape identification. You can work on numbers, letters, whatever your kid is interested in. I also like to use this as a vision contrasting board as well. Um, it really helps, works, wonders. I'm not doing a very good job because. I'm not sitting in down flat. There you go. Big enough square, as you can see. Wiki sticks. You can get them on Amazon. You can also have your parents grab some at Rib Crib. They provide these in the kids' meals for free. I think it's like a pack of five or ten, maybe. So you can do that. And you, I like how it stands out on the black. You can just really see it well for those low vision kiddos. Great universal piece. Now we have the Fisher Price Set Me Up floor seat. Obviously, now we're going to go into seating and positioning. I forgot to announce that category. So the Fisher Price set me up. It's just a really good alternative to the Bumbo seat. I'm not a big fan of the Bumbo seat because it does not align your hips correctly. And this one is just a bit more um, ergonomically correct for infants and toddlers. It's collapsible. As you can see, it's folded down. It's got two uh, toys on it for you. The cloth comes off and is washable which is excellent you know you're gonna have drool and food and everything else on it um, so it's easily taken off and you're able to wash that um, it sets up with just the click so sets up just like that and the baby is in it as so kind of a does not have a belt in it, so you have to keep an eye on your kiddo. You gotta sit with them. Um, it's just really good for interaction with others. Um, sitting on the floor, it's a wide base of support, all those kind of things um, and uses. It's a really good piece. A good alternative suggestion to the Bumbo seat, which a lot of parents are drawn to, and I don't really know why. I think it's because it's just popular and sturdy, so they think it's better. But in reality, the positioning is really just not what it needs to be. 
Then we have the Versaform Positioning Pillow. I think this one is really cool. Here's your pump. So your pump works by squeezing back towards your palm. And it actually is the opposite of a pump. So it extracts the air instead of puts air in. This is your positioning form. You guys have a large one. I do not um, for traveling purposes for me and things like that. Um, not actually positioning patients. So I have the smaller one. Here is your valve. And here's your shutoff tube, and your opening tube. You put this little round disc in its place. You connect the, oh, I gotta remember. I always remember. Put it on there. And then you suck the air out of the first form. Let me see here. I think I have it plugged off. Yeah, there we go. So then after you get the pump in, you kind of position this any way you want to position it. So one of my favorite things to do is a wedge. I take it, fold it over, and then I take the air out. You can see as I'm pumping it, it's going down on its own. I'm not touching it. It's suctioning itself, forming. So now it's super hard and stiff, like I can barely like reform. So then you have your edge. Super easy. I also like this piece because it is waterproof. So just let the air out of it and you can see it's kind of pliable now. It's not hard and stiff. But you can put this in the bathtub and use it for a bathtub seat or whatnot. Um, of course with supervision. But some of the times we have a really big problem finding a bath chair that fits correctly um, or, you know, insurance isn't covering it at the time or whatever. You could try this and see if it works for positioning in the bathtub. It's really great. Helps reduce bed sores as well. Um, just a really good positioning pillow to form whatever your needs may be. Now we're going to go to recreation. And I've already kind of showed you guys um, the spinning light show, but we have Bubble Mania. You have one that is different than I do. This is what was available in our inventory. Um, he is missing an antenna. Oh no! These are switch adapted. He has a switch port here. I have. I kept out the spec switch just because it's small and easy. But simple, on and off. It can be used for um, attention to task, visual tracking, um, of course, play. What kiddo does not, does not like to play with bubbles? So he moves around and blows bubbles. So. And you can give your kiddo control. So if they can't pucker their lips and blow, you know, a bubble wand, or if they don't have the fine motor skills for a bubble wand, this is another way for them to access bubbles just like their peers, which is something that we often do as providers. Uh, I use these bubbles all the time. Another really cool thing, which um, are those sticky bubbles. So they're bubbles that you can hardly pop. Um, typically, you can get them in like the dog toy section, but they do have them in kids, but they're super fun too, because they're, they just stick to everything and they don't pop. Um, so those are fun as well, but bubble machine, really fun. Kids love it. Shoot, adults love bubbles too. We have a new fun one called the fiber optic 
switch adapted light. It has a really cool fun base on it. It's crystallized, switch adapted, as I said. It has an on and off switch on the bottom, so make sure that you turn it on and off. It changes colors. Actually, I think you leave it off to switch. Yeah. So it's a really quick button. So if you tap it, it goes off automatically. So you're gonna want to hold on to it. The longer you hold on to it, it will change colors. And it goes through rainbow colors, which is really fun. But you can do a quick tap on and off, which is com completely fine. Just you won't ever get to changing the colors. And the whole thing lights up. I kind of squeezed it together so you could see that. Because in the light, you can't really tell. But it's really a fun piece. You could also get that cushion grip switch. And the kids could hold on longer, you know, by placing pressure down on the table um, to watch it change colors as well. So a fun play switch. Let's see. It's good for cause and effect, visual stimulation, learning colors, language skills, tactile and sensory. Now we have the spinning light show like I showed you earlier. You know how it works. Gives you multi-colors of array of lights. Just an exciting display for kiddos. Also visual tracking. I like to move this left, right, um, center. Let me turn it this way so you can see a little better. Multicolored, like I said, just good fun play. Who doesn't like to make a disco? All right, now we have the seven level communicator. The seven level communication builder allows recordings and playbacks from one, two, four, eight, or 16 different messages per level. There are seven levels for recordings providing a total of up to 112 messages. Um, the total recording time is 300 seconds some things in the way and I don't want to make a big crashing noise. The small device, it's really lightweight, portable for ease of use and access for those having difficulty with speech communication. I just made um, a symbol six board. This is what it looks like without a picture board. It has multi-level grids, as you can see, that come with it. Two, four, one, several. I have a four grid on here. I'm just going to put on really quick. There we go. Just my pictures a little bit on the back. This is your mic. Record your volume, your windows, and your levels. Super easy to record. You just press the um, the squares that you're wanting to record on and hit the record button at the same time um, and you can record a message. I have some pre-recorded messages on here. The volume is also your on and off. Like. Not. Go. Want. Big Mac switch. It's another simplistic speech communication device. Um, it's excellent for uh, actually switch use. You can use switch use on the back, um, but for children with visual impairments, physical disabilities, um, a large target area, just like the big, the big switch, big red switch, um, has five inch activation surface and record any single message up to two minutes in length and press its activation surface for playback. So here, it's kind of hard to see. It gives you how to record 
step-by-step um, -step direction. Here's your recording button, your volume, and then you can do switch access with it as well. I've already, I think Allison pre-recorded this. I don't like it. I don't like it. Super simple, two minutes. Um, you can connect a toy or appliance, like I said, for switch use as well. So it's kind of a multi-function device. Great piece. Then we have our symbol stick squares. These are really fun. They are communication, two by two inch precise clear pictures with words. So they support cognition and learning. Um, we have two sets. We have the first core one and core two vocabulary, I want to say. Yeah, core vocabulary set one and two. Um, so they're just different pecs is what I call them. This might be the harder one of the two. This is set two. But stop, just simple things. You could use this for a communication board. You could use it for a visual schedule, any of those kind of things. Object identification, multi-purpose. Just a very low-tech, simplistic piece of AT. Now we're on to our vision category. First, we have the Lamaze Rainbow Glow Rattle. Simple infant rattle. Has three contrasting rainbow shades that come and go as you move it. It's designed for little hands for good grasping. Has a broad base um, to make it safe, you know, so they're not putting it in their mouth. It's really quite wide to put in their mouth. Um, I really like to engage your vision with visual tracking this way, um, especially in the dark, um, you know, or a very dim lit room. So I can see if they're looking left or right, or, you know, are they crossing midline with their eyes and those kind of things. Um, just a really simplistic piece again, that really helps and you can do auditory as well. So you can do on each side, you can do above the head, behind and front those kind of things for some um, auditory processing and feedback, which is really great. And then of course your motor skills, super easy. Um, I would suggest that you take out the batteries um, because it does not turn off. So the more you move it, it keeps turning on. And um, that's something that I've kind of learned um, while getting those out and about to everyone. Now we have the light box. My light box looks a little different. We are have been replacing light boxes with this um, when a county doesn't, you know, it's missing or broken or whatnot. So this is my light box. This is the Guidecraft portable light box. They kind of call it a tablet actually, which I think is kind of weird. Um, so it's not really a tablet, but it's really bright. As you can see, I wrote on it with the marker, um, which is kind of cool. You can paint on it, write on it, do sensory activities. Um, you can teach shapes, object identification, arts and crafts. Um, I like this because it has a, an edge on it, so they things can't roll off of it very well, which is really nice. It keeps the objects in place. Um, the only thing about this one is it does not have adjustable feet on it, so you can't like angle it and stuff, but you can use your slant board. Then we have the spinner board. You should have something that looks like this with the suction cups on all four sides and then the, the spinner rack. It suctions to the light board as so. And this also is where your color overlays come in handy. Because you can put them on the board. You have different colors 
underneath your board, no problem. And then you also have these spinners. So you have these different spinner patterns. You should have a few circles, I think two circles, two squares you should have. And then you can add them to your spinner board. Now we have the touch and match board. It's a really new activity that we added to our kits. Um, it's a touch and match board, like I said, it's tactile. Um, so each cell has a different texture, which I think is really cool. So um, we've got low vision, they can work on their tactile identification skills um, by matching. So it has the same color and same um, texture on the inside of the pieces and the board, which is really cool. I think it's wonderful. Look, I have to look because I'm upside down. Like this one's a sponge. There's several different kinds. So there's rough carpet, there's burlap, there is um, kind of like a turf, there's Velcro, um, like a bamboo, um, sandpaper, that ribbed board, which is really neat. Um, and then like a fuzzy felt type, which is neat, and the slick. So um, it's very visual, good for visual skills, language, reasoning, um, just the corresponding texture with the surface on the board. It's just really neat. I love it. It's a good one. So do color matching with it. Lastly, we have the Uncle Goose Nemeth Braille Blocks. So these have the numbers written on them, kind of everywhere you go on each side, just like a normal wooden block, but then it has the braille embossed on them, um, on two sides. So here and then on this side, it's also embossed. It's just a really good piece, again, to get that tactile uh, recognition and beginning to learn braille for you know, effective communication skills. We do want to say that the Nemeth Braille is a higher education Braille and it's not something that they need to memorize at a young age. Um, we just added these for uh, tactile experience um, and not for learning experience, learning of Braille experience. So just remember that. Be careful when you're cleaning them because you will rub the embosser down. So just be very careful. The Able Tech phone number is 1-800-257-1705 or my direct number is 405-744-7734. My email is amy.l.woods at okstate.edu and our address is 1514 West Hall of Fame, Stillwater, Oklahoma 74078. Again, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.